I'm the Tireless Tangler, and you have arrived at day 62 of the 100 Days of Zentangle Project 2020. Thank you guys so much for being with me today. It is so awesome to be able to meet with you every day and feel like I'm tangling with friends. Today's tangle is going to be Eriman. It is by Bonnie Luther, CZT, and uh, it is um, a very closely related tangle to uh, the, the Zentangle original tangle, Betweed, and that is Betweed with a D on the end. Uh, so what I wanted to do today, instead of doing a full-size tile, uh, what I wanted to do was play with some bijou tiles and show you some of the different configurations that you can do with this. What this basically does is put the tangle between into a um, grid, okay? So I'm going to, since I'm working on a bijou, I'm going to go ahead and use my 005 uh, today. This is a very small nibbed pen. I don't know if you can see. This is uh, like half the size of the zero one. And uh, um, so I thought it would be nice for working in a smaller space. So what this is, is this is a square that is divided diagonally into two triangles. And then you do between in that, okay? And then when you put them together in different formations, you have different meta patterns formed, such as this pretty little uh, fanned out thing in the middle. And of course, this is the one I like. So uh, let me show you how this goes. You want to start with a square grid. Let's see. Okay, and let's do okay these don't have to be perfect or exact which is good that's frequently something I am grateful for all right so to begin this um, you're going to want to put a small or a narrow, long, open C shape connecting the corners on two of the sides. Like this. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Then you're going to divide this square diagonally, and you can do it either way. It doesn't matter. The only thing that will be different is the configuration of what you get in the end. Okay? So, uh, the way you start is you begin at a corner and you're and at an open corner, not with not uh, the corner where this diagonal line hits. And you're going to make a between stroke, which is basically... Which is basically like this. All right, then you're going to shift your tile and start at the other corner that is on the same side. And this is very similar to the way the Tangle Paradox begins, except for all of the going around stuff. And you're just going to continue to layer these lines back and forth. Try to take your time so you don't overshoot it like I did. As with all other tangles, this will look best if you take your time. 
Okay, then turn your tile once you have filled this area. I guess we can fit one more in there. And they will start to curve as you go. That, that is perfectly normal. Okay, then turn your tile 180 degrees and repeat this on this side. So start in the corner. Do a curved line up and go to the other corner. And begin to layer these sort of wedges back and forth until your space is gone. And so this is what you have left and um, you know if it were more more careful I think you could see. Now uh, one thing that is not in the step out that I played with was adding the between line weight and I did that on this one and so I'm I'm going to leave this without but I will probably do it uh, on the uh, ones coming up. Okay so we have one square this is considered a fragment uh, it is a single element that you can then put together in different ways to make meta patterns, which are patterns that are above and beyond or and different than, than the single one. So in this fragment, we're going to take it and repeat this on these other squares, okay? And the way that we set up the diagonal line is going to make a difference in the pattern that we end up with, okay? So I'm going to set this up. Uh, in the same way that this is set up, okay? And then I'm gonna show you some, some examples of the other ways that we can do it. Again, you start with your relaxed open C shape, not too large. Repeat it on opposite sides. Now, one thing I have not done, well, we'll get there. We'll get there. So in order to get this pattern that I had in the example, what we need to do is set this up like this. Remember the diagonal line here goes this way, right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this much down here on the bottom. I am just repeating the steps that we did up here. And I'm doing this for a reason, I, because I want you to see the configuration as it needs to be to achieve, to achieve this example, okay? So we basically want to set them up in square or diamond shape in order to get this pattern, all right? So let's finish this up. Once again, uh, pick whichever side you want to start on, but uh, go from, let's see if I can make this so I can push my strokes out. Well, so you start in the corner that does not have the diagonal line in it. Pull your stroke down. Okay, shift your tile. Make another one of those little wedged strokes. Shift back and continue. Back and forth, shifting your tile, taking careful strokes. Just focus on each stroke of the pen. And when you finish, you will have something really cool shaping up like this, okay? Then flip it to the other side and you're going to repeat this. Start in the corner without the diagonal line. Make your first little wedged stroke. It will be curvy, slightly curved. Okay. 
and you can enhance the curviness or you can keep it more straightish. It's really up to you. At some point as you go though, these strokes need to uh, curve in order to uh, make it happen. I'm sure someone else could make them stay straight, uh, but that someone is not me. So that's kind of cool, right? Let's keep going. So this would be a perfect time for some tireless comments. If only I had a little boy that would read me some. That's what I thought. Shifting your tile will really help you keep your strokes consistent. Okay. And you can actually play with things like this where you set it up, but you leave parts of it blank. So there, there are many, many different ways to play with patterns like this. And, and so because we have so many new uh, tanglers in the, in the crowd, as you will, um, I really want to to be open to um, working with patterns that that teach basic principles and uh, this between stroke is one that you will see a lot and it's really fun the woven effect of it is really fun son likes for me to draw on his hands while we watch movies <laughs> and so I get my white jelly roll out and uh, I draw whatever our patterns are that day he thought this one was pretty cool it looked pretty good on him so we got a tribal tat going on okay so again you want to start in a corner that is not where the diagonal line is and then draw your between in frame. Okay. So one more section and we will have accomplished one. So Linda Farmer in her article on this pattern has tried uh, several of these configurations. And so if you would like to see her examples on these when you're uh, trying to decide uh, which way to go, then you can. She's got a good explanation in there of how that's done. All right. so. This is this. These are the same. And uh, it, this is my favorite configuration. Now, what can we do else with this? Well, let's see. Let's try it out. So I'm going to start the same way. At some point, I'll figure out how to draw this grid uh, more in a more orderly fashion. But for now, <laughs> we're stuck with me. Now, on this example, I want to find out what else we can do. And I have had several thoughts about this that I would like to try, but let's, let's go with some different configurations first. What if this time we do this configuration? Yeah? 
So let's find out. First, I'm gonna add my open C's to each side. One of the things I want to try is turning these sides um, around and see what happens then, but not on this one. Okay, so again, I'm going to start on the corner where my diagonal line is not. And then weave in my between strokes. we're getting a little line weight on that one all right then turn your tile and repeat from the corner without the diagonal line to the diagonal line and then alternate back and forth square from the corner with no diagonal line Okay, this is an interesting meta pattern here. Let's find out what it's gonna look like when we're done. Corner with no diagonal line to the diagonal line. Slow down, Cindy, take your time. Okay. Interesting. I love doing this uh, kind of thing, playing with fragments, turning them different ways, and finding out what you get. I usually struggle with patience uh, to really get into them, but uh, I really enjoy changing the configurations and, and finding something new in there. All right, uh, this could be cleaner. Let's finish it all and see where we're at. Again, starting always from the corner with no diagonal line. And bringing your stroke to the diagonal line. Then go to the opposite corner. And weave them alternately in. Okay. I wish my uh, middle C shapes had been a little more consistent. I think uh, I think we'd get a better idea of this pattern that is emerging here. This is called a meta pattern. Wow. Okay. Again, I wish I had had done better job on these strokes, but uh, this is an interesting, I really like the little, this little shape here. I don't know. Let's see. Let's finish up.
okay? So this is the second meta pattern. It is, let's look at this. It, it is somewhat similar to this, only the points here are together. I don't know, it's interesting, it's interesting. I'd like to get a couple more examples of that that are a little bit uh, better drawn, but it's interesting. Okay, so now what else can we do? Okay. Now, what can we do? Uh, so, again, playing with the direction of the diagonal lines uh, makes a difference. So, let's do, let's try at least one more. I really have some questions. Okay, and then uh, diagonal lines. So we have gone out in, we have got, we have pointed them in, we have uh, done a square. What other configurations could we do? We could do we could do all the same direction. Okay, so again, always on any of these, starting on the corner with no diagonal line. Starting in a section and you're not sure where to go, that's what you do. Tell yourself, corner with no diagonal line, and that is where you start. Should mention that you can pack these in very densely if you like and make them very narrow or you can make them sort of fat and loose uh, that's entirely up to you and what you like so we are doing the same stroke over and over again Okay, 
that got out of hand fast. Ooh, let's go ahead and do this. definitely different. Let's look at the differences here. They're, they're very similar. Zoom out. They're very similar, but, but they're definitely, they definitely give you a different sort of feel. Uh, I sort of like the way this is sort of fanned up and then fanned down and then fanned up. Um, I'm just wondering now if we could change the configuration of this somehow. Eh, I'll stop. So, um, <laughs> these are three of the ways that we can handle this. So, the, the last thing, and, and there are, of course, more than this. The last thing I'm desperate to try that I have no idea how it will turn out is that I want to turn these sides um, on. I want to um, change up how the sides are turned. So what I mean is, what if, what if we did, this, and then this, make sense what I did here I just turned the box on its side okay now let's not get confused okay so we're gonna make a diagonal line going one way or the or the other and so I'm gonna keep it standard here do my diagonal line like this so I wonder what would happen if on this one I did the same configuration that I did in the first one. But the boxes are turned different ways. Let's find out what will happen. This, this is interesting. This is interesting. Okay, so let's fill in the squares as always, starting in the corner with no diagonal line on it. doesn't matter what order you do these in. Treat each triangle differently, or separately, I should say, not differently, or, you know, if you want to change it up inside, I suppose that's your deal. You can do that. This might also be something fun to try, like I uh, mentioned earlier, is leaving, leaving one side of the square blank, or just uh, setting it up partially, like I have uh, in these. 
but I really want to see what this is going to look like uh, when I fill it in. So uh, let's do that. Again, the corner with no diagonal line in it. where you start as long as you can remember that start in the corner with no diagonal line you won't get turned around treat each square separately focus on each square separately don't get uh, confused or um, drawn into the squares next it will it will be confusing so just keep doing what we've been doing starting your stroke in the corner that has no diagonal line and then layering alternately back and forth. Okay, and then again, same thing. Interesting little meta pattern on this. Okay, I really like this. I really like this one. It's fun and different, but it's the same tangle, just in different config configuration. So my challenge for you guys uh, for this one is to put it in as many different configurations as you can, and then let me know which one is your favorite. We've got a bunch of different kinds here. I really like the little windmill sort of uh, look here that we get. These are, whoops, let me zoom out. So these are fun. These are lots of fun. Let's see if I can fit these into a little mosaic here. Which is the reason Zentangle calls these tiles is because uh, they like to use them to make mosaics which I find lovely so there we go those are some uh, just a few of the configurations that you can do with Iriman or Iriman and uh, I really enjoyed playing with this tangle uh, you can again like I did on this one put your little line weight at the ends like in between or you can leave that off it is up to you and then for shading, I'm going to, again, do my shading where the lines converge. And uh, uh, I really went overboard with shading on this one. So I think when I shade these, I'm going to be a little bit more uh, circumspect, if you will. But I really like these. So um, let me know what you guys think of this. Uh, this is Iriman on day 60. Oh, my goodness. Day 60. Really, none of them. <laughs> Ah, uh, day 62 of the 100 days of Zentangle. I love it. Thank you guys for being here. And we send greetings from Oklahoma from me and Mari and Simba. Much love, guys. Stay safe until tomorrow.